name's Matthew. I'm going to try to do a quick introduction because I think I wrote a novel of a statement here. Uh, so I don't take up all five minutes. But um, I was a musician until I was opened in Cebu. And soon after that, I received that my um, work would be filmed. And uh, so 20 years later, it finally started happening. Um, the first feature film I made, I was the producer and editor along with another Subud brother, uh, Hermas LaSalle, of a movie called The Madras from Evil, which was about the pedophile priest in the Catholic Church. Can you speak up, Matthew? I'll try. Um, yeah. The, the, first the, the first, no, I'll just shout. Uh, the first film that I did was in 2006 with a Subud brother named Hermas LaSalle. Uh, it was called Deliver Us From Evil, and it was about a pedophile priest in the Catholic Church. Um, I was the producer and the editor, Hermas was the other producer, and um, it was an experience of, of working and feeling the Latihan as I worked. And it was the first time that really um, I'd had that experience. And the film was nominated for an Oscar to all of our surprise in 2007. And so my first experience making a feature film was, the conclusion was sitting at the Oscars uh, right behind, uh, or right in front of Al Gore, who we all knew was gonna win. Uh, but uh, it was quite a, a journey from having no concept of how I would enter the film industry, having no family uh, in it, and then literally being guided through the Lottie Hunt every step of the way. Uh, and that opened the door to to do more documentaries. So I did another film uh, called Teenage Paparazzo with Adrian Grenier, who's the star of a HBO series called Entourage, um, which was more of a light piece. Um, I think had I been given free reins on it, it would have been much more intense. So I saved up that intensity for the film that's screening today at 415, a film called How to Make Money Selling Drugs. Um, which is a guidebook on how to sell drugs, but what it really is is a Trojan horse. Um, the soldiers that march out of that horse, hopefully, are uh, inspiration to look at all human beings as one and not uh, as criminal and then the so-called good people because they're but for the grace of God go I in any situation and what tool to allow each other to put uh, ourselves in another's shoes than stories. So, uh, a statement on the future of storytelling. Stories are tools for living. They're how we organize and make sense of our lives. Stories give meaning to the thread of time. Stories are the metaphors and models we use to define our morality. They give us heroes who set examples for how we want to live or how we don't. Stories are magic because they're wish fulfillment. They give us an adventure, an insight, an escape, and a roadmap to salvation, to forgiveness. Perhaps most important, they give us the opportunity to walk in each other's shoes, a universal set of values. In the great stories, our heroes carry our dreams for us until we're strong enough to carry them ourselves. At their best, stories change the way we see the world and ourselves. They inspire us to be our best. They remind us of our most human values. And when those stories end, we're uplifted, energized, and transformed. The famous Subud member, Varendra Vitachi, said, information that does not transform is just gossip. So at their worst, stories are gossip a way to make ourselves feel better than someone else, a way to confirm our judgments about others, a pat on the back and a confirmation of our cultural biases and prejudices. Bapak once said that if we want to be free of the material force, it's easy, all we have to do are two things. Never think of ourselves as better or worse than anyone else. And number two, never completely believe anything we think. <laughs> So the future of storytelling is a battle between two worlds, and I mean that literally. There's the narrow world of gossip, the salacious feeding of the low, lowest common desires, or in Subu terms, the world of the material, or the more nobler world of the human, stories that have real content, stories that 
uh, on an outer level, inspire us to be our best selves, and on an inner level, can be of even deeper service. As residents of the digital revolution, we are all storytellers. We are the heroes of our own narratives. In the last decade or so, we've started to make ourselves the heroes of our own fiction. <laughs> and that's the reality of Facebook or Instagram and so forth. And there in that space, we represent ourselves in perfect lockstep to the culture taught to us by the most ubiquitous and powerful stories in the entire world. And those are the stories of advertising. We create the image, the messaging, the narrative of our public story. And advertising is usually, of course, the most base form of it. As the stories of selling products take all aspects of human life and subjugate our highest values, family, safety, love, fulfillment, as being the domain and instant gratification provided by the material object. Storytelling story driven by the material forces create a world of uninformed people, easily manipulated and disenfranchised by a powerful minority who use stories as an opiate and an income stream, and that's at its best. At its worst, storytelling driven by the material forces not only grooms us with the culture of advertising, but pulls us down through our smartphones, our computer screens, and video gaming, and deeper into the future of virtual reality exponentially bringing the human experience literally into the digital world. We're 50 to 100 years from now. There's a reasonable scenario to assume that many people will choose to give up the messy, uncontrollable space out here to live as immortal gods of a digital universe where eternal instant gratification is the norm. A place where we can consistently cast ourselves in the perfect image of our imagination's wildest desires where the entire universe is only what we think that it should be. From a Subud perspective, this is the end of the human world. The other possibility is a use of the medium to do something else, to inform and engage us to be better and more effective citizens, to inspire and uplift us to stand on our own two feet, sometimes safely with a balloon underneath. <laughs> To ultimately turn off the screen, to close the book, to leave the theater with the courage to carry our own dreams for ourselves. But in Subud, it's even better than dreams, because these are visions and actions guided by our soul. And since today, whether we're professionals or not, we are all storytellers. And the content of our stories is our collective responsibility. What values do we choose? to represent to the world? What archetypes and heroes do we uphold and wish fulfilled? The future of storytelling is up to us. Mm -hmm.